up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. This is State of Mind. And um, if you like what you see, hit this little button right here. It says subscribe. And we're, uh, we're heading to uh, 120,000, which is thanks to you, the audience, my best friends, and the guests. Um, I want to talk about a show I used to watch called Intervention. I mean, I, I really haven't stopped watching it, but I just don't, I don't think it's on anymore. Um, I, think what, I think what they do on those shows is God's work. I think it's phenomenal. I used to watch and invariably cry at the end of, and not, and not everybody gets help. Not everybody wants help, but to see, ah, man, I'm getting emotional a little bit. To see the families, what addiction does to the families, more so even the individuals, because the individuals are just in it. They can't, they're just... They just keep going, going, and they're, they think that everything's fine when it's not. But it's the families that, that suffer because they have to watch the loved ones going through this. And I've seen friends of mine go through things also. Thank God I was never addicted to drugs or, or uh, alcohol because I, I truly don't think I would be here. It's bad enough to be mentally ill and bipolar and go through all that with anxiety and depression. But to add drugs and alcohol, too tough, too tough. Anyway, the, the, the beautiful thing about these uh, rehab uh, interventions and the rehabs is that the people that are saved from the suffering and all those people that help that out is just angels, man. So I, I think I have an angel in front of me. Um, she's the program director for Fresh Start a Rehab Center. She's been through a lot. That's my understanding. My, my daughter, Kaylee, works for Fresh Start, works for her. She's here because of Kaylee, because Kaylee told me how incredible this person is. And her name is Lindsay Santani. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. Um, since I don't know much about you, on this state of mind, I'm going to let you guide me through your own life. Okay. Like if you, had a, if you wrote a book, right, <laughs> and you just tell me, uh, like, where are you from? Where, where'd you, where were you born and all that? Sure. Sure, I can do that. Right. Um, so I'm originally from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you, isn't there an accent? There to used to be. <laughs> um, it was very thick and... Uh, I had my grandpa, God bless him, his soul, he, he, he said, you sound like trash, and you need to get that fixed. Wow. <laughs> and so... Um, but what is it like, that message? Is it just kind of... It's very nasally. Uh, I, you know, I packed my car. Oh! <laughs> I, look, I just kind of... I Look like at that. your car keys. You know, oh. you don't pronounce the... The R as an uh, R, it's like a A H, you know. Maka. Maka. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you grew up. How many brothers and sisters? Um. Well, I grew up an only child. An only child. Yeah. I do have uh, two siblings, but unfortunately, I don't really know 
um, them very well. Um, our paths have crossed, but I didn't grow up with any siblings, so. And how was it being an only child? Um, I, you know, it was interesting. I was very loved by my grandparents and my, my dad and um, sometimes lonely, but, you know, I've always been very outgoing and um, not anymore as an adult, but yeah, <laughs> as yeah. a kid, for sure. Um, and so it was, you know, my dad met my mom actually out here in California, um, and he was a young Marine oh. stationed in 29 Palms, and uh, they met and had me. <laughs> wow, but then your mom left? She did, yeah. So, um, you know, he she didn't want to have another baby. She had my older sister, and, um, you know, my dad convinced her, you know, let's do this. Let's try to make some, this work. And they back to Massachusetts they went. And, um, you know, she she left when I was two. I mean, she, they, they broke up shortly after my, I was born, but she officially, she came back to California um, when I was two. So um, my dad raised me and my, my grandparents, and um, he was incredible, but a very young, you know, he was a kid. He was How? 20 years old, 21 Dang. years old, you know, just out of the Marine Corps. And yeah. um, luckily I had my grandparents, and they were amazing. And, um, you know, he, he did the best he could. I know this today, you know, growing yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, I felt very different about it, but today I know he did the very best with what he had. Has he passed away now? No, he's he's um, living his best life. Oh. Yeah, we have a great relationship. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, but now. Not your mom? No, that relationship, I don't have a relationship with, wow. with her, um, unfortunately. But I have a wonderful stepmom, my mom, she, you know. Yeah. Uh, my dad um, met her when I was eight, and, you know, she was like, that's who God put in front of me to be my mother, you know? Yeah. And so we're very close, and I'm grateful to have her. Now, what kind of uh, kid were you in school? Were you like a tough kid, bad kid, good kid? Yeah, I was a bad little girl. <laughs> <laughs> even from a young age, I, you know, I had to have like, um, even, in, uh, man, I think back. Like, like what grade? What grade? I think is starting it? in elementary school, I had to have the star chart. And I had to earn stars every day. And if I didn't get a star, there was a note home for whatever reason. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was, I was uh, not bad, bad, but I fought, got in fights and things. Um, so you were kind of really kind of bad. Rebellious, for sure. Yes. I, you know, at the age of, I don't, I don't know, 10, 11, maybe. Yeah. Um, I was on the school bus, and the bus driver was like, I was probably doing something I shouldn't, and he told me to get in the front of the bus, and I told him, F you, you're not my dad. I got kicked off the school bus. Really? <laughs> yeah. And that was kind of my mantra in life, <laughs> F you. <laughs> wow. You know? um, and so I gave him hell, you know, and... Uh, and now, that was at elementary or... Probably junior going high. Going into junior high. junior high. Yeah. Then high school. Yeah, high school. How was came. that? I don't know why. I, I, there's something that tells me to talk to you about how you were in, in, in school, you know what I mean, when you were a teenager. Yeah. Stuff. So then high school, what happened? Um, high school, so I think I started, I drank for the first time around the age of 14. And um, <clears throat> I, on the East Coast. I was 10, yeah. 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 Um, and it was the middle of winter, and on the East Coast, and we lived at the time, I lived in New Hampshire, um, really small, small town, right at the, like, near the Canadian border, very small town. And I remember uh, my dad was gone. He never left, you know, and he, him and his um, wife or girlfriend at the time, they went away for the weekend, and her, and I was, had the opportunity to drink, <laughs> and I took it. <laughs> at 14? Yeah. What did you drink? Uh, the cheap vodka that comes in a plastic gallon jug and I just I don't remember chugged it. <laughs> and I got on the snowmobiles in the middle of the night and like took off and um the snowmobile like died in the trail and yeah. like I had to walk home and I, I don't think I was properly dressed like I just remember walking home like please god get me home please god get me home and um I couldn't wait to do it again 
So when <laughs> you took that first drink, it was like a it was like a good feeling. Yeah. That that. Now, what was making you so rebellious? Um, at that I, younger age, you yeah. Know? In knowing what I know now, yes. Right in hindsight, I look back and I think that it was just. Like I said, my dad and I have a great relationship now, but at the time it was very tumultuous, and um, I was very angry. I was very angry at him. I think I was very angry. I, I know I was angry at him. Yeah. Because it, it was like um, one woman after another type thing. Oh. You know? And um, it was difficult, and, when my, and so when my mom and him got divorced, um, he got together with her best friend and that was like that was like oh, and then I yeah. couldn't see her you know there was it was yeah. very um they were arguing and it, the, you know fighting with each other I and get I was it. stuck I in the it. middle of that and so it was just like just once again I just felt left alone you know yeah. I felt alone and abandoned yeah. and um no one could would listen to me you know um and so I needed to figure out where to put those feelings. And know? then the drink probably made you feel like it's, you know, it, yeah. it's there for you to make you feel good. Yeah. And then you didn't stop drinking? How was that? No, I, I from there, it was every opportunity I got to drink, I would use it. Um, Damn. And then it was smoking weed. You yeah. know, that was big. Um, I had a much older boyfriend that would pick me up from the bus stop, and he smoked weed, and we would smoke weed on the way to school, and um, you know, and then those feelings of just escaping, yeah, was just yeah enough for me where that's all I wanted to do was escape. Um, How were you in, in school, like scholastics? Not I, like Kaylee, but no, definitely not like <laughs> Kaylee. I think I could have been if I had, yeah, 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 yeah. That, you know, but um, my mind wasn't, fo I was in so much trouble all the time, you know, yeah. I was in so much trouble all the time that nobody knew what to do with me and um, suspended, you know, um, I thought it would be fun to go take a bunch of mushrooms during midterms. And see how that worked out. How you did know? that work out? I've talked about mushrooms a lot <laughs> on this show. A lot of time to talk about mushrooms, but in a positive way. Yeah. But yours was in, had to be negative. Yeah. I, mean, I we was just, being on mushrooms in a classroom. I don't remember. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, I was that party kid. I was the kid that, you know, I was the one, instead of like, playing sports or focusing on my academics, I was arranging all the parties and, you know, I, making sure everybody, we got all the beer and, like, just yeah, yeah. going to Canada Me too. Me and getting, too. you know, we used to drive to Canada, get go to the bar, because the drinking age was 18, but they didn't card, I mean, um, and just drive back, you know, and that's what, that's what we did, that's what I did, you know, and um, finally my dad and I just, he, you know, he had had enough of me and we were fighting all the time and I was constantly in trouble. And, um, you know, one day him and I got into it really, really badly. And, um, I called the cops on him and they decided to remove me from the house. And, um, I got put in a foster home and then, how old were you? Uh, I think 14. So it was like, yeah. So that 14, 15 year was yeah, like yeah, pretty yeah. intense, like 13, 14, 15. Um, and the foster family was nice, but they um, they had like a hundred cats. I mean, it was just not very like, yeah, I don't like it was that. gross. So, um, so I just used that as my opportunity to go wild, you know. And they didn't, they didn't. The, then you went yeah. wild, wild after the, the more the, wild. It keeps getting more wild. Like this is, yeah, I, this I don't is, think that there's like an end to how wild I can get. This is like a movie, like a movie. <laughs> So after the hundred cats, she said, "I can't do this. I gotta even start drinking more." Party. Now, as far as drugs, weed, mushrooms is pretty. That I, I've never done that. But did you get into cocaine or anything like that? Or? Eventually, eventually. During this time, it was it was primarily alcohol, um, acid, 
And then acid. Now, what's acid like? Um, it's like you're just you like take something on your tongue. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then you, you just, just trip out. <laughs> you just see things. You feel like you're not like real, and you're just like in wow, this other dimension. I don't, I don't know. This yeah. is a tough one. Yeah. Um. So because of my behavior, I got taken out of that foster home, put in a group home for women, for girls. Um, and then, you know, I, I couldn't like do anything bad in there. It was very heavily, obviously or very monitored and, and such. And so I, I was there for a while, a few months. And I was like, look, all I want to do is go with my mom. Just I'll stop. Every, I'll, I'll be good. Just let me go live with my mom. And that wasn't going to be the plan. The plan was to reunify me with my dad. And at this point I was like, fuck you, you know? Wow. And so I ran away. And, um, Where did you go? I hitchhiked about oh, 400 my. miles to... At 15, 14, you yeah. hitchhiked? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Um, Damn. And I, How many times did you get picked up? That was just once. I had, um, I ended up getting a ride. Somebody was going from... Wow. I got lucky. Um... And so I went to I went to my mom's house and I sat on her front porch and then um, it was like the mid, it was like middle of the night early morning and I sat there and I was just gonna wait for them to wake up and then like knock on the door but then I got spooked I was I didn't want them to send me back so I left and I just started hitchhiking again and I got picked up by this guy and um, I was like do you have any weed and. He was like, no, but my brother does. I was like, okay. So we drove back to his house. I smoked a bunch oh. of weed. And I didn't leave for like six months. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I told him I was 18. And, um, yeah. And but then, you know how many, look, I watch Dateline and all these shows. <laughs> that, you know, you're just lucky. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still wouldn't want you to stay with somebody for six months or whatever. But, you know, Mr. Serial Killer, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who could just chop you up. He was a nice little Portuguese <laughs> boy. And you were with him for six months. Yeah. Yeah. And so so after, like, the first month, I was like, well, I got to get a job. I'm not just going to. So I went and I got myself a job at Dunkin' Donuts. And I worked and came home. And he worked. I mean, it was like, it was like this, like, I made this normal, like, thing, you know? And, um... He ended up buying me like a diamond ring, and that's when I like kind of freaked out. I was like, "Okay, I'm 16. I'm like 50. I'm 16, you know." And so um, I ended up. What happened was my mom found me. She she ended up finding me, and she walked into the Dunkin' Donuts one day that I worked at, and I was like, "Can I come home with you?" Oh, <laughs> and wow. she said, "Yeah." And so I went, I, I went, I said, I'm out of here. Sorry. Thanks for everything. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And she took you back. To yeah. And I went home with her and I transferred Dunkin' Donuts to the one in her town. And, and, and I just, I just kind of lived like, and I went out, I made friends. I went out, I partied. It, it slowed down, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was out when I got my driver's license I bought a car. Did you graduate? No. I I did drop I mean, I never went back to high school. I have my GED, Dang. but I never went back to high yeah, school. Yeah. Um, and one day I got pulled over in my car, and my name came up in the missing children's database. And so I was arrested or detained. Oh, my goodness. And um, I called my mom, and I told her what was going on. And so um, they brought me back to New Hampshire and that was the first time I had seen my dad. I think it was like two years I had been gone at that point, or maybe a year and a half. The timing's a little fuzzy, but um, we went to court, and you know he was. I I told the judge I said if you lock me up again, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. So um, he said just let her go, let her go live with her mom. I know she's safe. At least I know she's safe. You know. And so that's what happened from there. I went and went back home and lived with my mom and. Um, I don't know if that made me feel like I was invincible or in a way gave me this like, like maybe just 
inflated my ego or something. Yeah. Like I beat, I won, you know. But right, right. I from the, I was like, my addiction took off at that point. Yeah, I was gonna ask you at yeah. this point. Did you? You probably didn't have a clue, but or did you have an inkling that you were addicted to alcohol? No. Or you just Not, kept going. Right? I just kept going. Yeah. And it was party and fake IDs and nightclubs and ecstasy and wow. ketamine and cocaine and then um, oxy. And What's oxy? Oxycontin. So I don't know if you've ever seen. Have you seen I've like the Netflix shows like Painkiller? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Dose, I have. Like, yeah, yeah. I, that was like. Yeah. I lived that. So wow. when the oxy, I remember, like I got it prescribed for a toothache, a wisdom tooth. You know, what does um, it feel like when you when you do it? Numb? Numb, euphoria, you know? I mean it's Okay. It's a feeling that Oxycontin is, you know, you get kind of nauseous, but it's I you don't know. You get kind of nauseous. Oh, a little know. nauseous, but wow. but it passes and then like once you get past that, it's like it's it's you're high. You're just hot. You're high, you know? Nothing bothers you. Everything's great. Well, that's what it is. All this stuff yeah. is self-medicating, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's numbing the, the pain that you feel. Yeah. And when you can get rid of the that, thank God I didn't, I didn't do any of that, man. Because I wouldn't have been good. But, uh, wow, it just, and, and, and then the more you do, and the, the great it feels in the moment, probably, you're going, this is the way I want to feel. All the time. Yeah. But then it ends. It does end. It does end. Um, and for me, I, I can't just drink a beer. I can't just take a pill. I can't. I need to get to oblivion. It doesn't matter what that costs me. It doesn't matter where I end up. I need to be gone from reality. Give me as much as you possibly can. Um, and it's just how my. It's just how I've been. You know. Um, now, what about mental health? Any, any mental illness that you grew up? Because I, I ask this question to everyone. Just because back in the day, nobody, nobody did. Who cared? It yeah. was like, oh, you're depressed. Go, go to sleep. Yeah. You'll, be, you'll wake up. You'll feel go. better. You had none of that? It was all just uh, drinking and drugs and all that? Um, or do you think you had some depression in there? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. I, I, being in, when I was in that foster home, they prescribed me medication for depression. Um, I, I'm on medication now for anxiety and depression. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. Um, my anxiety, what do you want? Lexapro. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. That was my, oh, man, listen. And we'll get back to your incredible movie <laughs> in, in a second. You know, during the pandemic, I you know, I, I talk about it so much that I think people are like, okay, Maurice, we we know that what happened during the pandemic, but there are people who just tune in and haven't, you know, watched State of Mind. But during the pandemic, I went through hell with anxiety, hell, twenty from every second of the day, suicidal, thinking of ways. And Lexapro, finally, after four months of torture, Lexapro basically saved my life yeah because it got me over whatever hump that was i did get off it at about seven eight months so you're um so wow yeah because the, the anxiety like the i think the anxiety causes the depression for me yeah 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 and like i work myself up into these these thoughts these ins this just insane thinking and then i just and then that makes me you can't stop die. that you can't <laughs> stop it yeah now, this thing's okay. One thing had this is great. This conversation is fantastic. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, what scared me the most, aside from a lot of stuff, was at one night I started shaking, man. That's never, I mean, I've been through three nervous breakdowns in a mental institution, anxiety, got off planes, but I've never had this. And have you had that? Um, I've had panic attacks. I know the panic, but not. No, not, my whole know. body's shaking. Yeah, I mean I've shaked, but no, very, but I know yeah. this, right? Yeah. And and so with the way we think, because we're now brother and sister, <laughs> the way we think, 
the, I thought, I'm done. Because this never happened to me. And I said, honey, to my wife, uh, what's, I'm done. I'm, I, I, uh, I lay on the bed and I'm shaking like a leaf. And I, and, but then I find out that that's just the, the, the anxiety, you know, it's so much that it's got to get out somehow. Yeah. But I thought I'm. Yeah. Stro I would have been. <laughs> I know. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. Because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If that would have happened to you, you're like, oh no, now this is like. I just got my blood work done, and my doctor said you're you're heading towards insulin resistance, and I'm like, that's it. I'm dying. I'm going. But so now you're cool with the anxiety. Yeah, Lexapro has leveled me out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I just I'm still on it. I stay on it because it's very low dose, and it just yeah. levels me out. I can't. You know, if Costco's packed, I can't do it. You know, I get just, I used to, like, I can't go to festivals or, in any, you know, or that type of thing. It's just, I was at Chris Stapleton, and wow, we great. were, um, like, right in the front, you know, and I just, I just start sweating, and I just can't, I can't, I can't breathe. It's a great conversation. I love these kind of conversations. So you're, you're now in your 20s. Not yet, 19. 19. Yeah. Um... So basically my, you know, I was spiraling, mom was sick of me, you know, I mended the relationship with my dad because she sent me to go live with him for a short time, he was sick of me. Um, and so my bright idea in my brain was, well, fuck you guys, I'm just going to go find my real mom because oh, wow. that's all I need in this life. Nobody else can do this for me. Yeah. Obviously, you guys just suck. You know, I'm a teenager, right? Yeah. So that's what I did. I found her. And I was like, I need a plane ticket. And make it one way, please. And um, a week later, I was on a plane to beautiful Los Angeles, California, with everything I owned in two suitcases. And I thought that was, this, I was, I was, it was going to be great. You know, I vowed to myself when I got on the plane to not do drugs anymore. Um, never, still didn't think alcohol was an issue for me, but I told myself, I'm like, I'm not going to do drugs. This is a fresh start for me, and I'm going to have my mom. And um, to this day, I feel, uh, obviously, this was my journey, but I wish, you know, it would have been. I don't know what would have happened if yeah. I stayed, but I feel, I do feel bad to my, to, to my mother, my real mother, my, my lovely mother, but she, she forgives me, but... Um, so I met up with her and uh, had a ton of questions, and we went back to her house. She, lives, she lived over here in Northridge. And um, it Don't tell me she did drugs and drank. Uh, no, but um, she's, she's very mentally ill. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Um, and... Having, I have compassion, obviously, for mental, for yeah. mental illness. Yeah. Um, there could be some personality disorders involved with her um, diagnosis that made it really difficult to have a relationship with her. In fact, you know, I did what I do. I got a job, you know, all that stuff. And um, I came home one day, and my stuff was out on the front lawn. And um, she said it was a mistake bringing me here and to leave. But you were doing fine at that point, and she did that because mm -hmm. of the stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, doing what I do best, I picked up my stuff. I called that guy, and oh, <laughs> you know, and oh. called the guy I work with, or yeah, you know, yeah. and I just got on my feet. I just I stayed with him, got my rent and rented a room, and I was like, you know, I, I could have called and and went back home, but I was too proud. Because everybody yeah. told me not to do it. Right. Everybody told me don't go. Everybody said get a, get at least get a round trip ticket. You know, figure it out, but don't. And so, um, I was like, no, I'm in California. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out. You know. And so, um, you know, her, Kath, uh, my mother, my biological mother, and I, we did this dance back and forth for many months. You know, she would come say she was sorry. I would say okay, and I'd move back in. And we did this. Month after month after month. I mean, it was um, it was hard because it was like the cycle of violence, you know, in yeah. a domestic violence relationship, yeah. like the the breakup, the makeup, the blow up, you know. Yeah. And it was just. But she didn't get help. Is that what was happening? 
No, she she doesn't uh, she doesn't think there's a problem. So, uh. um, so you know, the good thing that came out of that was I got to really to get a really amazing relationship with my grand her, her father, my grandfather, and he was a wonderful man. And whenever he could, he would help me. You know, and um, he passed away in two thousand and nine. Uh, no, two thousand and seven from lung cancer. But um, I did get the opportunity to get to build a relationship with him. So that was really great. Um, and I got to be on the Sharon Osbourne show. So that was, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was living in Hollywood and, uh, I, I wrote Sharon Osbourne a letter because I wanted her to give best. me a dog <laughs> Oh wow. because during one of the times I left my mom's house, we got this dog together. I love this dog. This little cockapoo named Sydney. And, um, Sharon Osbourne happened to have, like, 20 dogs. And yeah, why yeah, not, yeah. you know? And so I wrote her a letter, but in the letter I, like, poured my heart out. I don't remember what I said, but I guess she, a producer showed up on my doorstep. Wow. And was like, she was really touched. Like, she wants to interview you. And so we did. I did that. I I don't think I'd ever do it. Like, if I'm looking back, see. I probably wouldn't have done it. But now, like, no, but I did it. And, um... We went to the Beverly Center. She went. We went shopping. I probably saw it. You might have. It was when she I'm had her talk fan. show. She's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, I probably saw it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and through her, I was able. She asked me what I wanted to do, and at the time, I wanted to be a graphic designer. Um, and so she was able to get me into the Art Institute of California. I got. Damn. She she gifted me a, a semester scholarship there. And so that so that's where I went to Costa Mesa. I packed up my apartment and went to uh, ended up living in Long Beach. Um, and my alcoholism uh, really got bad during that time to the point where I was like failing classes and not showing up and stuff like that. And then um, I was introduced to meth. Yeah, and um, my a, a friend of mine had it. I was failing. I was what? failing. Oh. Yeah. What is meth like? Well, well, what's fentanyl? Fentanyl's um, an opiate. So meth brings you up. Fentanyl brings you down. Meth is well, like why would you want to go down? Well, I didn't know what it was. No, I'm saying like like this brings you up. I can see wanting to go up, but why would you? Ta why would anybody take something that brings you down? Is it because you want to feel kind of? I don't know. You know what I'm Some saying? Some people prefer one over I the other. I guess. Yeah. I like yeah. them all. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you did meth and that got gotcha? you? That got me through school. I was able to pass. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great that in the beginning, great. you know. Yeah. Um That's amazing. But man. uh didn't that didn't last long either, you know, when what ends up happening, you know, when you're doing things like that is eventually I I got kicked out of school. You uh. know, eventually it it took a toll on on the way I was living and when, that was it. When I got kicked out of school, that started a long run of homelessness for me. Really? Yeah. Mm hmm And uh, jails and... Um, prison? I ended up in prison, yep. How was prison? Terrifying. With, oh my goodness. Terrifying, yeah. Um, Did you have to fight a lot? No, I kept to myself. I worked oh. in the kitchen. I got really fat and... <laughs> You know, I just, I, I, you know, the way I was living, you'd think like that would be something that I would, I would, it wouldn't phase me, but it, it, it scared the crap out of me. It really did. It wasn't, it wasn't a good time. So when you do prison time, and I've talked to quite a few people on, on this show, um, that could, you either take two roads with that, right? You can get worse or you can, it changes you to not want to go back there. Yeah. Is that kind of what happened? Yeah, I mean, um, in a way, um, you know, prior to, so I'm just going to back up real quick because yeah. I, because I think it's important, like, um, in that eight year, like I, so I had children, um, I had a child in 2006 and then when that, I wasn't able to take that child home with me. And so that was a real devastating part of my life, um. And this, I, the reason why I bring this up is just to show you like how powerful addiction really is. Mm. That I couldn't even get sober for the love of my child. Not that I didn't love him. I loved him yeah. so much. But I just couldn't do it. 
you know, and, um, and my, my best idea was to steal a truck and go live in Mexico. And that's what I did, wow. you know, and I, I left, I just thought I need to get, I need to go, you know, I'm really good at running <laughs> as you can tell. And, um, but the choice between that and a child and it, that's how strong the addiction is mm -hmm. that it, you, you, you make the stupidest choice, the wrong choice, obviously. Yeah. Just because of the. Yeah. <sighs> I didn't, you know, and, um, you know, so then I came back from Mexico just broken and wanting to be in my child's life. And I, I made that attempt. And that was the first time I tried to get sober. Um, but I didn't really do anything. And I think that's important to, to, to say because it takes work, right? I just, I ended up getting pregnant with my second child and, um, and I stayed sober, you know, for that pregnancy and I had that baby and it was, it was okay, you know, but I, I still wasn't okay. I was still really effed up in the head, you know, yeah. and um, especially now at this point, how, how the way I had been living and then dealing with my shit, now all this guilt and shame that I've brought into my life because of my actions, I, t I take ownership for that. Um, and, you know, when that baby was a couple months old, I, I went back to the streets and then when he was six months old, then I went to prison. So I had, when I went to prison, I had two children. And um, so when I got out of prison, I got that second baby, I got him back and um, I went to a program, but I, I didn't like what they were, I didn't like it. I didn't like what they were telling me to do, yeah. you know? And so I left and it really, it took my parole officer telling me, get your ass into a, a rehab or don't report to me and I'll put you in jail when I catch you. And I knew that I didn't want that. Plus for like three or four months from getting out of jail, I'm dragging this little two-year-old around the streets with me like, it was not fun, you know, wow. it was not, it was not good. It was everything I said I would never be. Every yet that I said I would never get to, I had passed that, you know. Um, and so I went into a rehab and that was in 2010 and, and I got sober um, and I got my, and I was pregnant with my third child, um, who's my husband and my baby and I got sober and, and, and I got sober and I stayed sober for a few years, you know, and I, I got the kid, I had all the kids and, you know, things were good, yeah. you know, it was good. It was, it was good. I got a, had a home, I had a job, I was a functioning member of society for the first time in my life. Like I never, it, I couldn't even it. imagine like what that was. I thought everybody was scamming everybody. Like <laughs> nobody's doing really working and, and affording things, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but after a few years, you know, that little voice inside my head told me, like, I could drink again. Jeez. You know? And so I did. I, I, I drank. I had a margarita one day because, I, you know, and after three years of sobriety. And um, by the grace of God, I didn't run my life into the ground. I stayed out. I drank and used for about a year and a half. I didn't run my life into the ground like I had done the first time. You know, I didn't lose anything. Thank God my kids still had their home. Um, but I, you know, I divorced my husband. I, I, you know, started using, you know, the whole, I, I was getting there. I could have got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, my husband and I divorced, and then he got sober, and I was so angry at him Dirt. for getting sober. Yeah. I'm like, oh, now you want to get sober. Like, right. And the, the good codependent in me is like, what do you mean? I, I did all this for us. I got us, the, you know, and like you couldn't, like I was so angry with him, but it, it had nothing to do with him. And I saw the change in him over time. And at first it pissed me off even more, but he became this person that I, I knew, but I couldn't, I was like, I didn't know. He was everything, you know, yeah. and it was through getting sober. Yeah, yeah. So I convinced him to like come back. And um, he, he did, but he was like, you have to be sober and you have to do these things. And he, he told me what I had to do. And it was through a 12 step program is how he got achieved, you know, where he was at. And I was like, yeah, sure, sure. I'll do it. And I didn't, you know, and he knew. And finally I got caught and he was, that was the line in the sand. He was like, you have got to figure this out. And, I, and he took the kids that night and I was given the phone number of a woman that to call that was going to help me. And, um, and instead I just wanted to die. 
you know? Yeah. I just wanted to die. I, I thought the world, my children, everybody would be better without me, you know? I, like, I can't, I can't, I'm not, this isn't for me, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? But I didn't. Obviously, I'm sitting here, exactly. right? Yeah. And I called that woman, and um, and that was October 4th, 2015, and, and that I've stayed sober ever since. And Damn. Yeah, yeah, just celebrated eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And you, you feel like you can do it now, or you oh, yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, I've had such, who sits in front of you today is not the girl from eight years ago, 10 years ago, to, like, I am not that same person. You know, I got to really figure out who I was, deal with um, all my issues of, you know, sadness and abandonment and, um, you know, all my children are in my life today. As I, like, as I told you, I got one sitting back there, yeah. one, two playing football today and, and, um, that husband that I divorced, we got remarried. No. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're both sober. We're both sober. Better life. We own a house. Own a house. You know? Wow. And I have an amazing career where I get to give back now. Fresh start. Fresh start, yeah. Let's talk a bit about that before we... I don't want to end this conversation. <laughs> but uh, it's been amazing. Fresh start is... Uh, uh, somebody put it really cool. Helping others to... Oh, man, I'm getting emotional. I don't know why the fuck I'm getting emotional. Shit. Sorry. No, I shouldn't be say sorry. Crying. If you look at the back of my shirt, it says tears are your strength. Um, a fresh start. Those suffering with addiction... Helping others discover their purpose in life. Yeah. So what's the program like for you and all that? Sure. So we do a, it's a residential program. So first 30 days of your sobriety, right? So wow. we, get the, we get the ones come in from their last drink, their last drug, um, from all over the United States. And um, I've been in it for seven years. I, um, and so... You know, we get people from all walks of life with all different addictions, um, all different mental health issues. Yeah. And our main purpose is to love them until they can love themselves. You know, they're so broken and feel, uh, feeling unworthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have moms coming in that have lost their children, dads that have been estranged from their children, um, young kids that are dying coming in after their fifth overdose, Jeez. like not even realizing that they're, it's like not, you, to do drugs today isn't like when I was a kid, you know, it's right, to, right. No. you're literally playing with your life every yeah. second, every time, no matter what drug you're using, it's in every, fentanyl is in everything, you know, and so we get them in their first 30 days, their most raw moments, and um the hope is when they leave, either whether that to be go home or to go to another program, um, that they have a solid foundation to stay sober, you know? Um, and I love it. I love what I do. Um, we have a great team. We're very small. We only have 12 beds. Damn. And uh, so everybody gets really, like, one-on-one -on -one individualized care. And, um, yeah. <sighs> making me emotional <laughs> no it's amazing man it's just uh this is what it's all about you know i just i do this show because there's a lot of people suffering dying addiction alcohol suicides mental illness so we got to talk, and we got to talk, and, and the deeper we go, the better it is, I think, instead of just kind of, and I just want to say, uh, Lindsay, this is going to, this is going to help a lot of young girls out there. I know it. I know it because I get a lot from the audience who write me and tell me, I saw this, I saw that, and, you know, and the way you told your story, your life, 
was not just entertaining, but it was, I, I, I wanted to hug you throughout the whole damn thing. And um, I really appreciate it. And I, I think the audience is going to really appreciate it. Well, I hope I can help somebody. No, That's you, you will. <laughs> you will. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. State of mind. Thanks.